Good morning, my name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your Cornerstone Community Church Service for Thanksgiving Sunday. And we're gonna open our time with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you today for this wonderful opportunity to worship you and to also as well enjoy your word and also to give thanks to you. Now we ask your blessing upon this time in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I do want to give you an in-person service or an invitation to our in-person service that will be starting today at 11 a.m. We meet at Cornerstone Hall. That's number six, Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045. Our service starts at 11 a.m. And now let's have our time together. When the palmless billows you are tempted toss, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Oh, count your many blessings, see what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Oh, count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever alone with the Lord of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Oh, count your many blessings, see what God has done. When you look at others with Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven nor your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Oh, count your many blessings, see God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Oh, count your many blessings, see what God has done. Well, that is something that we should be always doing, especially here at Thanksgiving, knowing that God has blessed us. There was an old song from Irving Berlin that basically says that we should be grateful and also as well, counting our blessings song as well. So we'll, but it all came because of grace. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God.
of God that has been given to us today. And today I'd like to share with you seven things that you and I should be grateful for at Thanksgiving. There's always something to give thanks for. Well, let's open our time with a word of prayer. Father, thank you today for our scriptures. Thank you for what we're going to be talking about over the next few moments. And we ask your blessing upon our your word in Jesus name. Amen. Well, most of us know that Thanksgiving is a good practice, but how do we know how good it is? Well, the Bible shows us the power of gratitude. You know, practicing daily thankfulness, not just at this time of the year, may seem like what we would call another chore. I hope to convince you today about the power of gratitude that far awaits the uh, few minutes uh, that it takes to practice. There are so many good reasons, of course, to intentionally cultivate gratitude and thanksgiving. Gratitude, of course, always glorifies God. This alone should be a, enough of a reason to give thanks to the Lord. Our gratitude glorifies God because we're not only exalting the gift of gratitude, but we're also exalting the giver. Gratitude helps us to realize that all we that all we have and all that we are comes from God. It's not about us, it's about Him. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there'll be, more, there'll be more great thanksgiving and God will receive the glory. This is what it of course says in 2 Corinthians 4 of verse number 15. Now also secondly, gratitude keeps us and helps us to see God. Gratitude opens our spiritual eyes. There's an old song that says, open my spiritual eyes that I may see you. This is a beautiful cycle of giving thanks to God. The more we thank him, the more he, we see him working in and through us. Gratitude also helps us to sense God's presence his personal care and his timing. Listen to what James has to say in James chapter 1, 16 and 17. He says, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, coming down from the Father of heaven, of uh, uh, the Father of lights, where there is no shadow or turning. You and I should understand that as we give thanks, God is going to dispense and also distribute his wonderful gifts of grace to us. In turn, we will be able to give it to others. Also as well, gratitude helps us to put us squarely in God's will. We often make God's will something to be big and mystical plan, but actually it's simply doing God's obedience. That's what, of course, um, different writers have been getting across. Andrew Murray wrote a wonderful book called In the School of Obedience. And when he simply says, you know, being grateful puts us squarely in God's will. And also as part of his will, we should be thankful, not just on the sunny days, but on the, what we would call hard ones as well. Listen to what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. 
Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Also as well, did you know that gratitude brings peace? When we count our blessings, as we saw, sang that song, not sheep, we are told to get rid of worrying and it, that will keep us up at night. Gratitude helps us to see God's hand in every circumstances. And God tells us we give him our thanks. He will give us supernatural peace. Listen to what it says in Philippians chapter 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, giving thanks, present your request to God, and listen to what happens. When you pray about something, it says, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Also as well, gratitude draws us close to God. Gratitude also magnifies and shows God's undeserved kindness as he draws to us. When we see Jesus, for example, healing the 10 lepers, as Jesus walked by, all 10 called out for healing. Jesus said this, go show yourselves to the priests, Jesus commanded, and they went and they were healed. Certainly they were all happy, but only one was thankful. You see, only one came back to Jesus, fell at his feet and gave thanks. Jesus said, were there not 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one has returned to give thanks to God except the foreigner. Then he said to him, go rise for your faith has made you well. When we, of course, give thanks, gratitude draws us close to God, but also as well, it makes us thankful for what the Lord has done. Gratitude also brings contentment. It is said that gratitude makes uh, makes what we have enough. If we're not grateful for what God has given us, the getting more will not satisfy us. Either. Being thankful is the key to contentment. Godliness with great contentment is great gain. For we have brought nothing into this world and neither do we carry anything out of it. But if we have food, clothing, we will be content with these. That's what Paul was saying to Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8. Lastly, gratitude deepens our faith. Keeping a record of God's past faithfulness is a faith boost when we face new difficulties. My gratitude journals can be testimonies of my hardest days and the worst circumstances. God's record of faithfulness is 100%. Listen to what David had to say in 130, Psalm 136, verse number one. That's why God has commanded Israel to remember his great deeds, giving thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. So you can know today that first of all, God is good. Secondly, that his love endures forever. And when we give thanks, it opens up a brand new avenue of worshiping the Lord. So let's pray. Father, today, I thank you for the wonderful things that you have done. We want to give thanks to you for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, today, as we are spending our Sunday giving thanks, and tomorrow, of course, if we have the opportunity, Lord, that we will spend time together with loved ones and to enjoy, Lord, the blessings that you have given us, especially here in this country of Canada. We have freedom. We have, of course, uh, wonderful blessings that many countries do not have, and we want to thank you for that today. Also as well, Lord, we want to thank you for your healing touch. Lord, right now, we have two wonderful scriptures to stand upon. One is Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, that says you're going to supply every need, whether it is food, clothing, transportation, or shelter, whether, Lord, it is physical, spiritual, emotional, financial, financial, or family. Lord, we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. Also, as well, Lord, we thank you for the second promise, which is found in Isaiah 53, verse number 5, and 1 Peter 2, 24, that says, by your stripes we're healed. Lord, thank you for both of these, and we claim them now as our healer and as our provider. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's close our time together with a wonderful song called Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Mm -hmm. 
Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. today for your many blessings. And Lord, today we especially pray and give thanks for those who are watching today and those who will be attending our service as well. So Lord, bless each one. And again, I want to invite you to our in-person service that will be starting today at 11 a.m. at Cornerstone Hall. That's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. Lord, Thank you today for each and every song that was sung, for each and every word that was presented by your word and the prayers that have been offered. Thank you, Lord, for this day, and we ask it all now in Jesus' name. Well, thank you for joining me. My name is Robert Dean Steele. I'm the pastor of Cornerstone Community Church. You have yourself a great and godly day.